want to do that one day. Yeah. Hmm? Jacobs with a Z, and I'm here to address concerns that too many perky white males are contributing to a lack of diversity on our screens. We couldn't agree more. Hey, Sakura. Hey, Mustafa. So we're getting together over the ultimate cross-cultural protein to help put this right. <sighs> We've got everyone in the room. Well, technically, it's not a room. Hey, let's not be spaces. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, Dad. Shh. Sorry. We've got all the stands. Got Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and this guy, Stan. People of color? I mean, who isn't? Oh, we've got our white whites, translucent whites, beige whites, red whites, and our dark whites who are darker than the light dark guys. It's a thing. All religions, faiths, and beliefs. Can I talk to you about Jesus? Yeah, sure. He's talking to 40. It's Jesus. Jesus. Ooh, thank you. Mm. Ooh. Oh, and of course, Jordan's here. She's Greek and proud. Do you know what the best thing is about diversity? Everything. So let's stop talking about it and get together over the meat that doesn't discriminate. Right. Lamb's ready. So, who was here first? Uh... Love you. Us. Right, you are. Welcome, everyone. Thank you very much for coming to our AGM today. I do have apologies from James Campbell, David Foote, Donald McGecky, and Jason Strong. I've been advised also there are a number of proxies that have not been collected from the registration desk. If any of the following people are present, could I ask you to please go to the registration desk and collect your proxies? They are John Carter, David Fisher, Kenneth Harper, Peter McIntyre, David Bayard, Andrew Ogilvie and Peter Wilde. As you know, MLA is a producer-owned company and many of our, of our directors are also levy payers. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce my fellow directors, and I'll remember Alan Beckett this year, who I forgot last year, <laughs> especially since he's going to do the voting. So if I could ask them to perhaps raise their hands, uh, and I'll call out each member. So George Scott is our northern cattle producer. Jeff Maynard is also a northern cattle producer. Lucinda Corrigan is a southern seed stock producer. Alan Beckett, Southern Cattle Producer and Audit and Risk Specialist. Chris Myram, Southern Sheep Producer. Erin Gorter, Western Lamb Producer. Stephen Chaw, Strategic Marketing Specialist. Rob Fitzpatrick, Innovation and Value Chain Specialist. Richard Norton, our Managing Director. And we're also joined by our Company Secretary, Claire Stanix. 
I'd also like to introduce Rob Lewis from Ernst & Young, who conducted our MLA audits, who's sitting in the front row. So the agenda for today, the order of business of the meeting will be as follows. Following my opening address, I'll present you, to you the report of the directors, MLA's financial statements and the audited reports for the year ending 30th of June 2016. I'll then take questions about the accounts. The meeting will then consider resolutions concerning the election of myself, Mr George Scott and Mr Alyssa Watson as directors of MLA. These resolutions will be debated and voted on separately and will be conducted by poll. As the first resolution deals with my election, I will vacate the chair in favour of another director while those resolutions are before the meeting. Following the resolutions before the meeting, Richard Norton, the Managing Director of Meat and Livestock Australia, will give his address. We'll then take general questions and comments about the management and activities of MLA and matters relevant to MLA and its membership. Once the business of the meeting is finished, I invite you all to join us for barbecue and drinks. Could I also say at this time that if you're unable to attend for the duration of the meeting today, the polls are now open, are open for the voting process. All that you simply need to do is to, to take the opportunity, if you wish to leave um, or leave early, is to hand your ballot paper uh, or put your ballot paper in a collection bo a box at the registration desk. A registration provider, Computer Share, will have that all at the registration, at registration desk. There's nothing unusual about it. It just gives you the opportunity to leave if you need to. So without further ado, I'll move to my address. So again, thank you very much uh, for attending the AGM the after this afternoon. Whether you're sitting in the Adelaide Hills Convention Centre or you're live streaming on your device, I'm pleased to welcome you to the MLA 2016 Annual General Meeting. MLA places a high priority in giving all our members the opportunity to participate in our AGMs, both around the country and we offer all live streaming of our speeches for those who can't attend in person. This year, it's been a pleasure to be held in the Adelaide Hills. Yesterday, 15 producers signed up to a pre-AGM bus tour where there was some work uh, shown around MLA and, and from its subsidiary company, the MLA Donor Company, uh, and, and looking at those investments. Within a 50 kilometre radius of this room, producers saw firsthand innovations and research in action, which include the covered aerobic lagoons at Thomas Foods International. This technology has not only addressed community odour concerns, but has reduced the company's natural gas consumption by 30%. Over the five years, TFI has been working with MLA Donor Company. They've reduced their costs by $27 million and their carbon dioxide equivalent emissions by nearly 270,000 tonnes. On the bus tour, they also visited Tim and Sarah Burville's a Hereford Bow Store restaurant. There they discovered a new product on the menu which had diners raving, a dry aged saltbush mutton loin. Previously, the Burvilles used their state of the art drying, aged drying facility in the Adelaide Hills to dry aged beef. But in a trial funded by MLA, dry aged mutton outperforms standard wet aged lamb in taste testing. This has opened up an opportunity to value add what, to what was traditionally perceived as a low grade product, giving diners a unique flavour experience. I'm pleased the levy payers were able to see this important work in action, which is, and it's work which is fostering the long-term prosperity of the red meat livestock industry. If you weren't on the bus, MLA's report is another way that you can see what MLA is investing producer levies in research and marketing in 2015 and 16. You can get a copy of these from the MLA website or at the registration desk if you're here in the room. Other ways to stay across MLA's work include through our website, feedback magazine, e-newsletters, Facebook and Twitter. MLA is committed to transparency and accountability about the research and marketing it invests on behalf of levy payers and how we're managing your industry's company. In the next few minutes, I'll provide some insights from our markets and the businesses covered by the MLA board this year. 
MLA's Managing Director will later share with you some highlights where levies delivered tangible outcomes this year. He'll also provide an overview of the financial performance of MLA and he'll set out how MLA is actively planning for the future of the Australian red, red meat and livestock industry and the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. So if I start with the markets, 2016 has been another remarkable year with most of, of last year's record high livestock prices being surpassed by new ones. After many difficult years, it's so pleasing to see Australian producers reap some rewards from the markets. Such strong prices have contributed to the total value of the red meat industry and livestock by reaching nearly 23 million in 2015-16, only 0.9% below last year's results. Looking at the cattle and beef markets, Australian cattle prices remain wedged between two extreme forces. On one hand, Australian beef prices have been getting higher simply because the number of cattle has fallen to a 20-year low. On the other hand, most global price indicators are easing and as a result, the growing global beef and, and meat production, particularly in the United States, and improving market access from Brazil, Brazilian beef and Indian buffalo. So how will these extreme forces play out? The contrasting price trends and the fact that Australia is a price taker in global beef markets means that, the ones, that once Australian production eventually ramps up, prices will realign with global movements and move from the record highs. The United States will likely intensify its competition in our major traditional markets like Japan and Korea. Brazil will increasingly make its presence felt courtesy of new access agreements and a currency advantage in terms of the value of the real versus our dollar. As Australian beef comes under mounting pressure from competitors, our industry must continue to reinforce our position as a provider of high quality beef with traceability, safety and integrity systems to back up our claims. We are the envy of the world when it comes to these systems and we must continue to enhance and promote them at every opportunity to our global customers. With cattle supplies tight, export demand strong, and retail prices high, our domestic consumers are having to reduce their beef consumption. But the good news is, for our industry, is that consumers are spending about the same amount from the household budget on beef. As Richard Norton will touch on, MLA's Better on Beef campaign, which is firmly grounded in consumer insights, is gaining traction in a difficult market. The campaign has been able to reinforce the nutritional benefits of beef to our consumers at home. In the lamb industry, two trends which have been playing out in recent years have been increasing lamb slaughter and lamb prices. Historically, it's been either one or the other, never both. This really highlights the strength of domestic and export demand for Australian lamb. Our rising lamb production has been diverted to the US, Middle East and Greater China. <clears throat> At home, our consumers are eating the same amount of lamb and they're paying more for it. Australians are showing they really do love their lamb. This is a remarkable series of trends and there's no sign of them abating. We also expect the lamb production from our biggest competitor, New Zealand, will, will remain subdued. This alignment of the planets represents a valuable opportunity for our Australian lamb industry to invest in its future. I can report that enthusiasm was clearly evident when our board had the pleasure of meeting in conjunction with the biannual Lambex conference in Aubrey in August. In the goat market, demand continues to outstrip supply, symbolised by eastern states over the hook prices in 2015-16, surpassing last year's record by 33%. The outlook for goat meat remains bright, with Australian position as the largest goat meat producer in the world, supplying an increasingly diverse range of customers. While all levy payers keep their eye on their businesses, the markets and the season over the last 12 months, the MLA board remained focused on ensuring your levies were invested in research, development and marketing, which continues to contribute to the long-term prosperity of the red meat and livestock industry. 
This has included looking for ways to enhance operational efficiency in our companies, including the new Integrity and Information Systems Company, headed by Dr Jane Weatherly. In her role, Jane is charged with streamlining the management of Australia's traceability and quality assurance programs for beef, sheep and goat meat. This company will also incorporate the management of big data through the Value Chain Digital Strategy, which was kicked off last month, as we heard this morning, in Brisbane with over 300 participants. The MLA board has set MLA's other subsidiary company, <coughs> excuse me, the MLA donor company, on an exciting and ambitious charter. Its mandate is to attract more new investment in research and development across the value chain at a time when levy revenue is diminishing. In recent years, MDC's work program has been worth $30 million, but that's set to double with the extra funding from the Australian government. <coughs> to capture this opportunity, the MLA board has appointed Dr Christine Pitt as the inaugural CEO of MDC. During this year, the MLA board approved MLA's strategic plan 2016 to 2020. This is MLA's roadmap for our strategic direction and investment priorities until 2020. The plan has a single focus of fostering the long-term prosperity of the red meat and livestock industry. The strength of this plan comes from the collaboration between MLA and peak industry councils and the Australian government and the wider meat industry. The plan is aligned with the Meat Industry Strategic Plan 2020 and the Australian Government's Rural Research Development and Extension Priorities, as well as its Science and Research Priorities. Our, strate our strategic plan is based on six pillars, customer and community support, market growth and diversification, supply chain efficiency and integrity, productivity and profitability, leadership and collaborative culture, and stakeholder engagement. The successful delivery of the plan will contribute to a more profitable, sustainable and globally, globally competitive red meat and livestock industry by 2020. To conclude, I'd like to acknowledge the, the hard work of our researchers, agencies and MLA staff in helping MLA deliver projects and outcomes that foster the prosperity of our industry. I especially want to highlight the Australian Government as a valuable partner in our research, development, adoption by providing matching dollars for our, reach, we, for our research projects we manage. By leveraging this money with producer, money, uh, producer levies and with the voluntary partner contr contributions, we're able to accelerate the breadth and depth of our research and the speed of delivering outcomes for meat safety, rabbit management, new vaccines, through to beef automation, developing new red beef products and investigating new pastures. The MLA board itself has worked this year to provide strategic direction to the company. I would especially like to thank an outgoing member, Lucinda Corrigan, as our longest serving director on the current MLA board for her service over the last nine years. Not only has Lucinda served on the MLA board, but she's also chaired MLA subsidiary company, MDC. Lucinda, with your corporate knowledge, your perspective as a levy payer, your first-hand knowledge of issues affecting producers has been invaluable. And we'll miss you on our board and we wish you all the best in your new endeavours. I'd also like to thank the Peak Industry Councils, both Cattle Council, Sheep Meat Council, Alpha, or Australian Feedlotters Association, and the goat industry for all their help and assistance in the last 12 months. These councils work tirelessly to guide and monitor MLA's performance, business plans and budgets on behalf of levy payers. And most importantly, on behalf of the MLA board, I would like to thank every levy payer sitting in this room and watching on our live streaming for your support over the past 12 months. The coming year will present more opportunities for our red meat industry and livestock. MLA will continue to work hard for you as we set up our subsidiary companies for the success and to ensure our research, development and marketing services to continue to help improve farm productivity, profits and the industry prosperity. 
Thank you for listening.
Thank you, Madam Chair, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here again this afternoon. This is my third uh, AGM as Managing Director of MLA. Uh, I am the last speaker of the day, and, and uh, I will not take too much of your time, and I will be trying to be uh, as forthright as I can about creating a vision for where we would like to take MLA. And talking of visions, this industry has had a great history of people in it that have led the industry and created great visions. Visions that still deliver today. And I want to touch on that today as well. And I also want to tell you about how MLA is meeting the industry needs today, tomorrow and beyond 2020. So three, three things I want to cover. And, and as I said, the first one of those is, is around commercial outcomes that visionaries in our industry have created, have created and are still delivering enormous value to industry today. Uh, then I'll canvas and touch on a lot of what uh, uh, the general managers presented today and, and try and enhance some of those great presentations we saw from, from the MLA team. Uh, and then I'll talk about a vision that I'd like to see industry endorse and take up that will, that will lead our industry beyond 2020. So today, if I talk about MLA having a history uh, and the red meat industry having uh, a planning and, and investment models beyond a five year period that we traditionally have. Uh, and, and again, this is a little, little untraditional for the MLA and our marketing and research company and breaks the mould a little. So I want to give you three examples of things that have created long term vision, a long term value for our industry. The first of those is obviously MSA or Meat Standards Australia. And I say this a lot to anyone that's uh, had to endure me over the last three years around I congratulate the red meat industry for endorsing that the most important person in the value chain is the consumer. MSA today, in the last financial years, delivered premiums of $88 a head between carcasses, beef carcasses that were graded MSA and not graded MSA. Over 3.2 million head of cattle, or 36% of the industry uh, of, of beef slaughtered in the cattle, or beef slaughtered in this country on an annual basis now are MSA graded. So 3.2 million cattle over the eight, $88 a head is just under $200 million back to industry. And in previous years, it's been well over $200 million. And put it that in context that the rolling five year budget of MLA, including government matching funds, is $180 million. So there's one program that previous leaders in our industry have delivered to our industry uh, that is still delivering today. And we have 43,000 voluntary members in the MSA program. And the great thing I think about MSA is that independent data for Millard, which is around how consumers, consumers rank beef, rate beef for consumption pork and lamb. Uh, so, that, to me, is, is a clear example. Another example is Auctions Plus. Now, I know MLA doesn't own Auctions Plus, but, but forefathers of our industry uh, and people in our industry back in the late 1980s did Auctions Plus, uh, sitting around with green screens and the idea that today, nearly 25, I think we had 30 year celebration this year, did we not, of Auctions Plus where today Auctions Plus transacts about 10% of, of trades uh, in the livestock industry of just under $500 million in value. And, and Auctions Plus, uh, again, too, is, is addressing some of the issues around animal welfare. The animals are on farm, allowing sellers to, to uh, command a price, perhaps take a price. And the last one of, of four that, that has and continues to live with Jane where Dr. Jane Weatherly is around believing they're doing research is creating value. And, and the other researchers that believe they're doing things, perhaps in the genetic space, that's creating value. By MLA funneling all that research through one table that is dominated by early adopters in the genetics field, we are eliminating duplication. But the other great thing is we are ensuring that all R&D around genetics uh, in this country, in the livestock industry, is being brought through one place to maximise the research dollars available. We're also enhancing MLA's marketing information service, which is ISO 9001 accredited. 
we're working with Cattle Council on developing a wholesale pricing model and a cutout model at their request. Uh, we're covering more sale yards in northern Queensland and we've also developed a market indicator for Western Australia. You saw today that we're developing my MLA, a personalised, intuitive-based software system where you can design your own, own feedback system for how you want to see information about what MLA does and the markets with the over the hook or live markets that you want to look up and address. That is helping you as levy payers make better decisions and make decisions just in time. And thirdly, about what we're doing tomorrow, we're building on our strengths and heading off our threats. So by sh streamlining and strengthening the industry integrity systems as you've gone through today and seen, and moving to more user-friendly interface so producers have that feedback uh, and compliance through a single sign-on is about making your lives easier as producers. Uh, we want to absolutely put on one platform your compliance needs uh, and all the information that you require from MSA in an easy to use format. You've seen today that we're accelerating innovation. I thought uh, uh, it was very hard not to be proud of the MLA team that presented today. You saw that the donor company uh, today in a financial year is managing up to uh, $60 million of investment. But actually through the whole pipeline, there's $130 million under management. So that's $65 million worth of private investment that's going through MLA. And I think that's something that industry hasn't understood in the past. And in my time at being an MLA, something that you as a red meat industry should be very, very proud of, the fact that you have people willing to put their private funds into a company like MDC to, for innovation in our industry. But unfortunately, we also have a few threats and we're fighting two applications at the moment around genetic, um, that threaten the genetic advancement of our industry uh, in the international competitiveness of our industry. One is by a North American company that's taken a patent out on the uh, bovine genome, uh, which potentially means if we lose uh, our High Court challenge now around this patent that all genomic work done uh, in the beef industry would incur a licence fee. And there's a similar patent application made by AVS, which is a subsidiary of the former uh, Victorian Department of Agriculture. Uh, we are fighting these patents on behalf of industry. Uh, and, might I say, we have had support from government on ways to address these patents uh, moving forward in the, in, in the future. And finally, I'll touch on um, what we're doing to ensure uh, that red meat, and Australian red meat, remains on our domestic and international dinner plates. We're spending more money by understanding each market. You saw that clearly today from Michael Finucane. We now spend over $2 million annually on consumer insights, giving you the data that, that Michael presented. And a million dollars of that is through the R&D for profit uh, in a project called Insights to, uh, to Innovation, which is addressing the huge consumer market of China and how best as a red meat industry we can obtain the most value out of um, supply chain and marketing within that market. Our domestic market strategy. For beef, we promote the attributes that matter to consumers, specifically nutrition and versatility. We're also looking at nutrition in different way, just iron, protein and zinc, but promoting beef as a fresh and natural, via, as, as fresh and natural, via new programs that focus on providence with stories that celebrate beef's goodness and delicious. <laughs> For lamb, we continue to promote its versatility, be that through our products remain relevant to the retailer. But importantly, we must meet the needs of often busy and time poor shoppers. The Australian Butchers Guild program is designed and trained meat industry corporation. And you heard today from, from Lockie. It's designed to deliver education and merchandise to support butchers, ensuring we sustain a vibrant, independent retail channel. We continue to engage with all sectors of the food service industry to ensure business owners are aware and utilising all available beef. And if you've, what you've seen from Fam Sam Burke today, I think it's in pretty safe hands. This is to ensure that our product meets, meets their goals of the food service industry 
and and the pressures of being in that industry, which is extremely uh, extremely competitive environment. So our industry also has opportunity growth and the, and the numbers that are, are coming our way through Southeast Asia. Uh, we will also work with the industry to seek the opportunity from the UK's exit from the EU. And we'll see. <laughs> I thought you'd help me out. <laughs> I'm not going to do it again. Brexit, thank you. The opportunity for Brexit to, uh, to understand what our opportunities are with free trade agreements direct with the United Kingdom and direct with the European Union. Uh, but as an industry, we need to perhaps consider uh, how we could better coordinate our efforts around the many technical trade barriers that Michael uh, did uh, demonstrate today in his presentation. And MLA is here to assist industry to address these technical trade barriers with our extensive global network. So that's the last on, on what we are doing as an industry now. And I now want to talk about beyond 2020. And it's to me, it's about developing the new technology to generate, generate more value right across the value chain. You saw the recent ACCC uh, release, its interim report on the cattle and beef market study and, and its attention on the competitiveness of the Australian uh, beef and cattle markets. And it said it could be improved through objective carcass measurements. Uh, I took a real slap in the face and was quite hurt that uh, the ACCC decided to compare the red meat industry to the wool industry and say that they do it better. They objectively measure wool. I know it's a fibre, but the comparison was made that they objectively measure wool and have done for two decades. So MLA has been working on many fronts around objective measurement programs under the direction and support of the Peak Industry Councils in Cattle Council Australia and the Sheep and Meats Council. The benefits of objective carcass measurement to producers include the transparency of the product, objective measures, subjective measures, way to value-based marketing if country. Full value chain uh, included, as you've seen from Sean Starling's presentation, a more efficient processing industry. It would reduce wastage and workforce industry. The provision for accurate and objective data uh, to boost productivity through our processing sector. But the first stage of objective carcass measurement that I'm going to talk about in a minute would be the first stage that would allow a processing facility to move to automated boning rooms. So I'd ask you to consider that uh, when I rang Ox, uh, Ausmeat the other day, I found out that just in Ausmeat accredited plants, there's 845 graders. So take that as an annual cost that they cost somewhere between, say, $50,000, $100,000, and let's use low number. Graders in the industry at the moment are costing us uh, 40 or $50 million a year, if not $80 million a year. It is not feasible to be saying to government, come and solve our problems, uh, and please give us nearly $100 million so that we can do our own independent grading. Uh, what we do need is to provide a long-term solution. And that long-term solution is DEXA. DEXA uh, technology, uh, which is used for objective carcass measurement uh, for small stock, that is prime lamb and goat, has reached a stage where it is ready for commercial deployment. Beef Dexter, as Sean Starling said, is nearing confirmation to be ready for commercial installation in 2017. And at this point in time, I, I must acknowledge the collaboration through industry. A lot of the work being done on objective carcass measurement has been through the MDC and with the support of uh, a number of processes and their own money. So at MLA, our vision is also about capturing the value of this technology and the potential the data it generates so that it can be used to the benefit of the whole industry. Once the first stage of OCM is installed both small stock and in both small stock and, and beef systems, it will provide valuable information for the supply chain, including, as Sean Starling said, salable meat yield, bone and fat. The system will continue to become more valuable as ongoing research and development enhances the application of 
objective carcass measurements, benefits of objective carcass measurement technology to be realised by the entire supply chain and in full, the technology must be installed universally. universally. Resulting in a stage one objective carcass measurement system that is consistent across Australia. So to explain that, we want the same system of how carcasses are measured from first stage OCM right across Australia, from Tasmania to the Gulf and, and now across the Broome, of course. The ongoing competitiveness of Australia's red meat supply chain requires a shift to livestock production and marketing with producers will reward it against objective data and value measurements. Again, this shift can only be underpinned by objective carcass measurement technology being installed in a uniform manner across the whole industry and in a collaborative manner. That's why today I can announce that MLA is creating the platform to install stage one objective carcass measurement technology into all Ausmeet accredited meat processing facilities. The cost is approximately 100 or government funding. In the long term, objective carcass measurement will have countless benefits, let alone the potential cost savings over the long term. We propose that Ausmeet would be the whole of chain uh, independent regulator and system calibrator. Most important but of all is, is objective carcass measurement will generate a lot of data. MLA has a plan to ensure that data is available to all participants across the value chain. And this has formed the basis of our digital strategy which you also heard about today. MLA has started on the digital strategy. Many other industries are still trying to work out what it means. Our clear goal is to ensure that data is accessible and easy for producers to use. We've learnt lessons around locking up data. The more data is accessible and easy to use, the more benefit the whole value chain will obtain from it. So in summary, uh, your MLA has a strong track record of pursuing long-term vision to create value in the red meat and livestock industry. And we're still benefiting from those investments now. Today, MLA is generating value for your industry and stakeholders by ensuring your MLA is commercially focused as you are in your businesses. We are building on our strengths and heading off the threats that I discussed and securing Australia's place on domestic and international dinner plates. Our vision for the future of the industry will continue generating value for you today, tomorrow and beyond 2020. And we'll do this by developing new technologies such as objective carcass measurements to generate more value right across the value chain. Capturing the value of this technology and the potential of its data generates, and the data it generates to the benefit of the industry through our plan to install objective carcass measurement technology is into all Ausmeet accredited facilities. So I'd ask you to just look back at what I've said, and that is if we in an industry listen to the critics of MSA, or NLIS or our traceability systems, I think you could think about where we would be today. Independent data analysis from the International Centre of Economics has MSA returning $12.50 for every $1 invested. Our integrity systems return $8 for every $1 invested. We must view the investment in objective carcass measurement in the same manner as past leaders of our industry. We must innovate and we must invest and we must continue to differentiate our high quality Australian product from the rest of the world. So my last parting comment is that we are relentlessly commercially focused through a vision for the future of our industry and through collaboration and collective investment, MLA's fostering prosperity in the red meat industry today, tomorrow and beyond 2020. I thank you for your time. Thank you, Richard. So our plan worked. We've got the results, but in the meantime, I will...